Good afternoon, Facebook viewers. My name is Tom Lowy. I'm a columnist and reporter from the Galesburg Register Mail, and we've got an afternoon chat going on today. I am sitting with Leanne Porter. Hi, Leanne. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I am surrounded by diapers. You are. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing, right? It is. I to, think it's a good thing. To let people know, I am out in the Cleary Building, out on West Main Street. And I am inside Loving Bottoms Diaper Bank. Leanne, tell us what Loving Bottoms Diaper Bank is. Well, the, the short version is that we collect as many diapers as humanly possible, and then we get them out to partner agencies throughout our region to help families in need. Um, we've expanded a little bit. We have adult incontinence products and period supplies also. Um, and so that's, that's the cliff note version of what we do. And the thing that I learned today right off the bat was this is not a thing that you just do in, in Galesburg. You do this across five counties with the Regional Office of Education. Yeah, we are with the Regional Office of Education 33, Three, right. uh, which is they have their prenatal to three program in Knox, Warren, Mercer, Henderson, and yeah, Knox, Mercer, Henderson. Henderson Warren. and Warren. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Knox, Warren, Henderson, Mercer County. So that's, yes. I, I misspoke. It's four counties. Four counties. Right. Yes. And then also, I heard you on the phone. You certainly go to other counties where there's Yeah, we have, we have uh, partner agencies also in Fulton County. Um, we just, that's a different uh, regional office of education. Right. And so we're working on that partnership currently. So. Yeah. Amazing. That's like the Spoon River Pregnancy Center. Spoon River Pregnancy Center right. um, down in Fulton County and Canton is All one right. of our service providers. So you serve a wide variety of people and underserved rural yes. communities in, in, in our area, in West Central Illinois. Yeah, we, uh, a lot of the rural communities don't have the same uh, resources as big cities. Not that big cities necessarily have what we're doing either. Peoria doesn't have it. Uh, Bloomington Normal doesn't have it. Um, anybody that's doing specifically what we're doing. Um, but we really want to serve. It's really raining. Wow. Um, stay dry, everyone. Uh, but yeah, we want to serve the rural communities um, to get resources out that might not be available otherwise. And this has been covered before, and we talked about this, and so people have seen this story already. This is deeply personal. You, as a single mom at a point, struggled with yeah. getting supplies and things like that. What I was very interested in departing from that just a little bit is you found out about these diaper banks yeah um talk a little bit about how you got this started the evolution of beginning to having this warehouse on clary uh, in the clary building yeah so i mean you know most people have know that i experienced diaper need with my son that's now 15 uh, so that's the part of the story most people know um, I had an experience serving at a mission camp uh, where I was just blown away, um, had to go sit down and have a nice cry at a program in Springfield that had all of these type of things, things that I didn't have then, the diapers, the wipes, um, the laundry soap, the dish soap, the toilet paper, the things that I was struggling to buy right. uh, but didn't have the resources to. Uh, but of course it was, it was this great big place and there was no way that that was duplicatable for me, a stay at home mom, right. um, to do that. And a year later read an article about diaper need, uh, and diaper banks across the country that were being started. And a lot of people were starting them in their homes and stuff. Right. It, it Running wasn't, them right out yeah, of their basement or whatever. I didn't have to have right. a big building. I didn't have to, all these things. And I was like, I've got a big house here in town <laughs> as right. a lot of houses in Galesburg are. Right. I've got a room. Um, 125 square feet. It wasn't very right. big, and uh, a wonderful husband who was crazy enough Supporting to say, "Go you. ahead." Right. <laughs> and so we held some diaper drives, and then we went ahead and got incorporated and uh, started the whole process. So about 18 months out of the house, uh, did 33,000 diapers that, the first yeah, year. Yeah. So 2015, you're established. So okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And go ahead. I interrupted you. I'm oh, sorry. Oh no, that's fine. We uh, we did about 33,000 diapers that first year out of my wow. house, which wow. is crazy when we think about it uh, but as far as getting volunteers and stuff people just don't want to go to some crazy lady's house 
<laughs> you know, we're moving the diaper woman, right? We're moving the dining room table, and you know, right. you could only fit about eight of us in there before we were tripping over ourselves. Right. And the learning connections uh, in the old cook school, uh, they came alongside and said, "Hey, we've got an empty classroom, um, and we could donate that space to you." Uh, which was wonderful. We moved there, were there for a year, and really saw the volunteers um, really start to come out. And uh, that was wonderful. And then this uh, space that we're in now became available, and it's perfect. The uh, In the early days, I mean, we're only three, right. but in the early days, we I delivered all the diapers to all the partner agencies. I, right. I'd have to load up my car and uh, now the partner agencies can come here. We can host groups during the day. Uh, when we got our period supplies from Kotex, donated a 53-foot, you know, semi and trailer pulled right in, wow. and they were able to unload those pallets and get them in. Right. Uh, so now we're in a place that I, I foresee us being able to stay for as as long as Clary lets us. Right. So. And let's backtrack too to to the idea of need. Something else I learned. I think I I kind of knew, but it wasn't really at the forefront of my consciousness. Was that the this is an area of need, obviously, and it's an area of need from the social agency standpoint in that WIC does not cover diapers. There, there is no way for a person who's in already in social programs, working with agencies, to get the very basic diaper. Yeah, there's, there were not any programs uh, that allowed for it. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, isn't that covered on WIC? Isn't that covered on food stamps? Right. You know, the answer is just no. They're nutritional programs. They're doing what they're supposed to. And diapers right. were sort of the end product. Right. Um, but we're not right. really yeah. not really covered that way. And uh, so there weren't places. And we've got tons of good social service agencies. Right. They just didn't have this tool. And you would hear stories of people, caseworkers, buying them themselves. Um, programs trying to have them uh, but people just kind of stopped asking for them because they were never available or right. it's like oh yeah we've got some diapers but they're size two and your baby needs a size five right. uh, so you know they might as well not have them right. because they don't have I know for a long time I knew people uh, who would sell a little off their, their food stamps get a little cash and that's what they would use to cover diapers and wipes that they needed I mean now that I think yeah. about it that that was a common practice, mm -hmm. you know, um, ten years ago. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, it, it yeah. really is. It can uh, the average cost of diapers I saw is usually about seventy five dollars a month for about one child. About seventy five, and and one of the things that people don't realize, so I'm going to talk about it because you've got me on live. Right. <laughs> so is that people say to me all the time, well, you know, you can just get on Amazon. We we can order them on my Amazon Prime. We can just click. Uh, subscribe and save we're getting this great price but a lot of people that are in need they first off they don't have $119 to pay Amazon Prime right um, so they're not going to get that free shipping and everything they might not have the debit or credit card and people they might not have times, the internet yeah they might not have the internet um, and so a lot of times what they're doing is they're going in and they're buying the package that they can afford right now so they're buying right. the $10 package right um, they're not buying the great big Right. box so their cost per diaper is actually higher because they don't always have the same ability to buy right uh, and they're going oftentimes the to do. places the closest they can find yeah so if they're going to your convenience store or your your local corner store i mean if you're heading over to some of the stores that are outlying and not at the big back box stores a lot of times your your cost again your cost per diaper is higher so it's sort of a uh I can't think of the right word, but it's it's one of those hidden, for people. yeah, it's one of those right. hidden costs of, right. of poverty is right. is that you don't have the right. same ability to do what somebody that can just order off Amazon and get the you know the big box with three hundred right. diapers in it can get. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit of question mm -hmm. I didn't ask you during our, our pre interview. Tell me something that that you've learned in these three years. Because you guys haven't been doing it a long time in terms of longevity, but I know it's a very intense process, like this whole thing. Yeah. Th this is intense, you yeah. know, just just sitting in here. So tell me something that you've learned, either about yourself or about other people uh, in, in this three-year journey so far. Um, well, first, I'm, I'm not the same person that I was three in years ago way? when I started this. Um, just at personal development, um, getting over my own fears. 
um, stepping out, I would have probably broke out in hives if you would have wanted to do this three years ago. Um, well, and now you're a veteran of TV <laughs> interviews as well as videos. And, you know, and now stuff. I'm like two interviews in two days. Right. So, right. Uh, but so there's a lot that has gone that way. Um, I've learned a lot about the. I'm sort of this outsider coming into the not-for-profit world. So uh, you've got people within the not-for-profit world that have been doing it for a long time. Maybe it's what they went to school for. I transitioned from stay-at-home mom to I'm going to found a not-for-profit. Right. Uh, so everything has been, I, you can Google anything. How do you start a 501c3? <laughs> How right. do you incorporate in the state of Illinois? You just, you have to become resourceful. Um, and then you got to find a tribe of people. And that's one of the other things. We live in a really cool community. Right. I know that sometimes people are right. all, if only we had an olive garden, I've got to right. plug that because right. my kids are always laughing. Right. Um, but we have a really cool community and they've really come around us um, because I didn't do this. The community did it. I just give it the cause of voice right. um, and talk about it. But it's the community that provides the diapers, provides the cash donations to keep it going. They share our Facebook posts. They come out to fundraisers. It's it's really, it's not my diaper bank. It's the community's diaper bank. Um, and our community is pretty awesome. So um, I didn't want to move to Galesburg when we moved here. <laughs> so just the fact that six years ago, I didn't even want to move to Galesburg. And now I'm like, this is like the coolest community. Right. And I don't see myself leaving here. Right. Um, that's a pretty cool thing. And we have so many cool agencies and people doing really good things. Very um, dedicated people at agencies exactly. is the thing I find. It's, and they're amazing. And right. I love that we can give them a resource and they can go out and do more of the really cool things that they do. And to hammer home once again, people don't come to the Cleary building and pick up their diapers. No. You operate through agencies. So talk a little bit about that again, because yeah. you said flat out. To me, you know, like all I do is collect diapers. Yeah, we collect them. So I tell people it's like the Midwest Food Bank or the Riverbend Food Bank. People have usually heard of those. Right. They collect all this food and then they get it out to all these food pantries all over states or, you know, um, they've got this really big footprint. And so that's what we do. We're modeled sort of over after the food banks and that we collect all of the products and we get them out to the people that are already doing the good stuff. Um, because people will come in for diapers where they might not come in for something else. Right. Uh, so it's kind of a gateway. Item and let's talk a little bit about that. Door. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that because it is the the oftentimes you start with diapers and and young women will end up in educational programs. Yeah. So talk we've, a little bit about we've it. had a mom um, when we did an article earlier this year. Uh, she came and and was interviewed and she was sharing how. She would call, before she knew about the diaper bank, she would call a relative and they would pretty much tell her every mistake that she's ever made in her life and just kind of tear her down. Right. Um, and then they'd get her the box of diapers and then they'd show up with them and they'd do the same thing. Tear and her this, down again. Tear her down again. And so you're just not building up a good person here and, and right. how she's supposed to parent well when she feels so low about herself. Right. Um, but now she's in a program, she's getting her GED, uh, her kids get developmental screenings, she's just, she's getting support. She's able and that to get involved with, in other... That started with the going to, a, you know, going to a place to get the resource of diapers, and then she launched... Yeah, people come in for all different things. They'll, right. they'll reach out when they... We see, especially with our partner agencies, we'll take the regional office of education, the diapers are a part of like their home visits and stuff, right. so they're... They're building relationship with right. these people, the parent educators. They get a chance to really be in the trenches with the family a little bit right. and find out what other things are going on. Um, but people are more likely to keep those visits and stuff when they know that that's when they get the diapers. Right, sure. um, And Absolutely. so they're getting other things, but it could be at one of our walk-ins, like the Salvation Army or Jameson, right. um, where the person comes in. We had a, a woman walk to the diaper bank one time to, or walk to the Salvation Army. She said that her husband didn't want her to come. He was uh, retired military or ex-military something. And he, it was a pride issue. We don't ask for help. We take care of our own. We're not going to go ask for these. And so without him knowing, she walked there. And it turned out that the person that did her intake was the veteran services person. Wow. Found out through conversation all these things. They were about to be evicted. Um, he was able to get them into a program and was able to come around, talk to the husband and say, you know what? 
we need to set some of this other stuff aside, you know, let us come alongside you. Um, but she walked in just to get the diapers, not knowing any of the rest of this. So when you hear things like that, it's like, you know, right. the diapers are really the gateway thing. Um, and it's because in, in some ways diapers are just such a basic need. Usually if people struggle to fulfill that, they're struggling in other areas of their life, correct? Correct, which is one of the reasons that we launched with the period supplies. Right. Um, if you've got a woman that has a baby, I mean, nobody wants to talk about it, but I guess it's my platform now, she's probably having a period, and right. she's gonna buy diapers before she's gonna buy her period supplies. Right. Um, and so that's why we're, we're bringing those in, but there's also tons of girls going to school that are not, they don't have them, um, so they're staying homesick. Right. Uh, because they don't, I mean, what girl wants to go to school? Right. The embarrassment factor. <laughs> and yeah. the, just the embarrassment. Right. And, and right. that's, I mean, kids sometimes are mean. That's a stigma that's going to stick with you. Right. Um, people are going to bring it up. Uh, kids that are teenage girls that are, have shoplifted them. Um, right. I mean, how desperate do you have to be that you're shoplifting right. tampons or pads? Right. Um, so it's not, it's not, that's not the kind of community I want to live in. Right. Um, so I want that supplement uh, to be available to to people. And I'm going to put this down in the comments section. We're going to end with something very important. This Saturday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Correct. At Applebee's. At Applebee's. Tell people what's going to happen. We are having a pancake breakfast. It's our third birthday. That's so. right. Yeah, you got to get <laughs> out. We're like a toddler. I don't know if we're potty trained yet, but oh, there's a potty training class on October 9th. That's, he doesn't even know I'm going to plug that. <laughs> potty training class on October 9th. Uh, check out our website. All get right. Information. But um, yeah, so it's just sort of, a, it's a fundraiser, but sort of a celebration. We'll have some of our partner agency people are coming out to help volunteer at it. And it's just kind of a fun way to celebrate. And it's Diaper Need Awareness Week. So That's right. Oh. I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, so much it's info. A, yeah, so much. There's, it's always, we're always just drinking from the fire hose around here. But um, So 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Saturday morning, perfect chance. Yeah. It's five bucks. Five bucks, you get pancakes, you get to like help babies. I don't know where you go wrong with that. It's like pancakes and helping babies. Just show up. You can't up. get behind that. You're like a troll living under a bridge. Right? I mean, something like that. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I'm not going to call anybody out, but maybe. Oh, well, I will. <laughs> anyway, uh, so from 8 to eight a.m. to 10 a.m. Saturday morning, go out. It's five bucks to eat pancakes. And that money goes towards Loving Bottoms yep. uh, Diaper Bank. My name is Tom Lowy. Uh, this afternoon chat, you've been joined by Lee Ann Porter. Lee Ann, tell people where they can go online to get information about Loving Bottoms. You can go to our website, which is just lovingbottoms.org. Um, check out our Facebook page. It's just facebook.com slash lovingbottoms. Right. So you um, type in Loving Bottoms into your search engine, and you're going to get it. You're going to get us. Um, and so follow us on there. And uh, we always post all of our volunteer events. We do have a volunteer event on next Monday um, where people come out and wrap diapers. We love to have people there. Uh, and if anybody wants to just donate diapers um, right. right now, the uh, More Than Moms um, moms group, I guess, <laughs> they're More Than Moms though, at right. Northwoods is collecting diapers. And so diapers can actually be dropped off at the church office. And that's um, Northwoods. That's next to Walgreens on Fremont Street. Yep, yep, right. yep. So um, during business hours, they are uh, accepting donations there. Uh, so if anybody wants to help us celebrate our third birthday, all we really want is to feed you pancakes and you can bring us diapers. Right. So. <laughs> Folks, I want to tell you, at like 12.45, I contacted Leanne Porter, who you're looking at right now in this live video, and I asked her, hey, can we do a story about Loving Bottoms? And within 15 minutes, we were going. Yep. It was pretty amazing. Thank you very much for Thank your you. time. Thank you for yeah. helping us spread the word and, and raise awareness so that people well, know what we're doing and where people, the biggest thing is, is if you know somebody that's in need, get them to our partners um, because the resource is there. There's no reason for a baby in one of the areas that we serve to ever not have the diapers they need. Right. That's the most important thing. Thank you from the community you. for your efforts. Facebook book viewers, thank you for joining us this afternoon. You've been with Leanne Porter. She's from Loving Bottoms Diaper Bank. And I'm going to put a little information in the comments section about what you can do this weekend to support. And then we'll also throw down the uh, website where you can go to find out more information if you want to take part in supporting this program in any way. 
Thanks, Leanne. Thank you.